Hello, welcome to the Church of St. Rosalie's in Hampton Bays. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us begin our celebration welcoming Father John and Deacon Jim. mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, and Permius, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, 
chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
St. Francis de Sales, at the beginning of his treatise on the introduction to the devout life, he talks about the different parts of the soul. You know, we might talk about, obviously, different parts of the body, but he, he really talks about, when drawing in a big way on St. Augustine, he talks about the different parts of the soul. And I, I think some of them are, are sort of obvious to us, right? So we have the capacity to make decisions as human beings. That's, that's our will. We're able to will things and, and follow through. Uh, we have an intellect, an understanding, uh, with, a, with a memory and with, with these rational abilities. Okay. And then he talks about what he, what he calls affections. So the things that affect us. The ways that we, we sort of pick up information. And not just the five senses, but let me, let me give an example. Hunger. Hunger is an affection. It's a physical one, and it tells me that there's not enough food in my stomach right now. Now, once I know that, I might choose to act one way or the other. So maybe I'm out doing yard work, and I notice that I'm hungry, and I look up and I go, oh my gosh, it's, it's lunchtime. Okay, time to go eat. Or maybe I start feeling hungry, but it's 5.30 and I'm eating friends for dinner at 6, so I don't eat. Right? In those instances, that affection of hunger has presented that information to me, but then I act on it in a way that's virtuous or vicious. And what I want to talk about today is a different affection from hunger, although I could go on and on about food forever. And the one that I want to talk about uh, is anger. Anger. Because I think sometimes we get the sense as Christians that any and all anger is automatically bad. And then when we look at the scriptures, we see Christ turning over tables in the temple or cursing a fig tree, and we go, what is going on here? And just as we can differentiate between something like hunger and gluttony, we can differentiate between that emotion of anger, that affection of anger, and a wrathful response or a vengeful response. Because, right, keep in mind that, that hunger, it's telling me that there's an absence of food. And anger tells me that there's an absence of justice. That's what the emotion of anger is for. It's to let me know that something's going wrong. Now, maybe I'm getting my facts straight or maybe I'm not. Maybe I have a, a different opinion of what's going on. But ordered correctly, that's the reason we have it. It lets us know when things are off. And so when we look through the readings today, I mean, let's start with, with that first one, the Acts of the Apostles. Imagine you're a Greek-speaking Christian, right? And, and your, your grandmother lives in Jerusalem. And you write her a letter and you say, how's it going? And she goes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very hungry and I'm very cold and, uh, and I, I, I have no clothes and, and no money. And you go, well, aren't you going to church for the, the daily distribution they do? And she writes you back and she goes, well, yes, but they only give it to the, the Hebrew speakers. Anger, right? That emotion of anger picks up as a response to injustice. Right, but what's the response the apostles have? We don't hear that they're getting vengeful. We don't hear that they're getting wrathful. We hear that they say, okay, we're called to this prayer, we're called to this service, and if something is going wrong where those needs aren't being met, we're going to act on that. Now, I would imagine that the, the Hebrew speakers in, in those parishes probably had to, change, had, had to be told to change some behavior, but we don't hear that they're, they're taken out and marched through the, the streets and people are throwing tomatoes or anything at them, right? But because they experienced that, because they noticed the injustice, they were able to act to correct it, right? And I, I think maybe for a lot of us, there's, there's a good sense of that, right? Of, of love the sinner, hate the sin, right? So, so the anger perks up and you go, ah, there's an injustice and I want to act without hating the sinner. And so the question is then, what do I do with injustice towards myself? Right? Now, it might be a perceived injustice. Right? If I'm always flying off the hook, if I'm always getting angry, 
right? There's that, that humility to work on and that meekness to work on, right? And I, I, I think that the, the gospel gives a good example of this, right? So Christ is telling them all these things, and, and Philip comes up with that question. He says, show us the Father. And Jesus says, you still don't know this? I, presumably, Jesus has been saying this the whole way through. Philip should know this by now. Philip said he was going to follow Christ. Philip said he was going to listen to Christ. And, and over and over, what we hear through the Gospels is, they're not really paying attention. But the patience of the Lord there, and the meekness of the Lord there, is recognizing not that he's called to dominate, not that he's called to control, but that he's called, in all that humility, to serve. And he's called to love. And so even again, he says, he gives that explanation, and over and over, and even going further in John's Gospel, he's going to keep teaching with that patience and with that meekness. And okay, so, so we have all that, but what if it's legitimately unjust? And I think, at least I can speak to my own experience, is in those moments, I forget something. When I get really, really annoyed about getting treated what is legitimately, unfairly, we hear that answer, St. Peter talking about it. Right, that Christ is that cornerstone and we're called to be those stones. And the reason God created me was for God's glory. The reason I exist is to glorify God and not myself. And when I'm concerned about, overly concerned about how I'm getting treated, is this fair, do I like this, etc., etc., well, here's the thing, whether or not I'm being treated justly, or whether I'm treated unjustly as Christ was on the cross, nothing can remove me from being part of that chosen race, from being part of that royal priesthood. That I may announce, and as, as Peter goes on to say, we're called into this so that we may announce the praises of God. That's why the church exists. That's why the sacraments exist. That's why you and I exist, is to glorify God. And whether that situation is, is just or unjust in which I find myself, I am able to do that regardless. And so how do I work on this then? These, these situations, if I look and I see these unjust things, and I find my anger becoming not just a source of information, but it starts dominating. And I start acting, maybe vengeful or passive-aggressively or things like that. Well, on the natural level, there's a few steps I can take. Apologizing. Real easy step to, to knock down the ego. Right? Saying thank you to other people. Even if I think I could do it better. Right? Renouncing that spirit of control. Saying thank you. Forgiving others when they ask for it. Being willing to delegate to others. And in the spiritual life, right, so that's the natural response, but the spiritual response ultimately is that reminder of what I was created for. And turning to the passion and really dwelling on the passion, really dwelling on what Christ has done for me, seeing the example, not just rushing through some, some litanies, but really spending some time on how the most innocent person ever was treated like that, there is that grace. There is that thing poured forward. And so maybe I also want to turn to certain saints, right? St. Paul uh, was organizing the executions of people. A lot of anger there. Uh, we know Ignatius Loyola, Louis de Montfort, Jerome, right? We all know from their writings that they struggled with this. St. Peter, when Christ is being arrested, takes out a sword and cuts off someone's ear. We have saints who've gone before. We have this great cloud of witnesses before us who have worked on these things. And if I can work on, on that natural and that supernatural level for that patience, for that humility, for that meekness, ultimately I can make sense of those words that the Lord is saying to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. There are many dwelling places in the Father's house. 
in any situation of justice, of injustice, that gets that anger up, or even that maybe even gets my hunger up, is ultimately susceptible to the goodness and the mercy and the glory of God the Father for whom we were created. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Gathering our prayers and petitions, we offer them through the Son to our Heavenly Father. Our response today is, hear our prayer. For those baptized this year, and for all the baptized in the world, that Christ's risen glory be our constant inspiration and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those affected by COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all mothers, especially those whose names are indicated on the envelopes in the basket in the sanctuary, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Hannah and Dan Sullivan, for whom this Mass is being offered, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish community, especially for Roger Evans, and for our beloved who are recently deceased, Jerry Johnson, Catherine Patron, and George Mannes, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those intentions known only in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to, the, to Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until we come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Rosalie, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, we have a few announcements. Uh, so please continue to follow us on Facebook and our website for important information. Daily Mass and Sunday Mass can be viewed via video, and as always, the weekly bulletin is posted on our website. Uh, second, uh, Father Madaloni, myself, and Deacon Jim uh, have been very busy this week uh, blessing families and homes, 
If you shoot an email uh, or give a call to the office, uh, we're, very to, we're very happy to come and from a respectable social distance, uh, bless everybody up. So please do take advantage of that. Uh, next, uh, the church uh, here in uh, Hampton Bays is open daily from about 8 o'clock in the morning to about 4 in the afternoon. Um, so obviously we're not having the public masses right now, uh, but you are welcome uh, to come in if you'd like uh, and say a few prayers here in the church. Uh, next, the Mother's Day envelopes are in the lobby of the church here. Uh, if you uh, pick up the card, you can either mail in the donation or drop it in that uh, handsome looking brown wooden box that we have in the back uh, for donations. But please also take advantage of that. We like praying for moms. Um, next, we have uh, a blessing uh, for mothers for Mother's Day. So I'd ask uh, if you're if you're watching and you're a mom uh, to please bow your head. Heavenly Father, you, we thank you for the gift of these women, our mothers. We ask that through the intercession of the model mother, the Virgin Mary, the mother of your son, that you look kindly upon them, that you give them every grace and beauty in this life, and that through that grace they be brought by your spirit and her intercession to your glory in heaven forever. This we ask, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And lastly, we have a message from Bishop Barris. Um, so the scholarships provided by the Tomorrow's Hope Foundation are vitally important for families who send their children to our Catholic school. Uh, this year, due to the uh, financial and economic effects of the pandemic, Tomorrow's Hope anticipates a large increase in the number of families who will apply for tuition assistance. If your means allow, uh, please consider making a donation to the Tomorrow's Hope Foundation. Your gift will help fund a vitally important Catholic elementary school education for a student with financial need. You can visit the Tomorrow's Hope website, which is www.tomorrowshopefoundation.org. So all one word, tomorrowshopefoundation.org. And you can click on the Donate Now button to make a secure online donation. And anything you're able to give is uh, greatly appreciated. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.